Um, all right. Uh, welcome, welcome to the downside. Uh, my name is Jamarco Sarezi. I'm here with my co-host Russell Daniels, our special guest today, uh, TikTok star, voiceover star, uh, stand-up, soon-to-be star, uh, Lucas Arnold. Um, oh, Russell, I am. Uh, uh, I called my agent because things have been a little bit rough recently. Okay. And I, I was like, you know, why haven't I been getting any auditions? And she said, because Mercury's in retrograde. No, she did. <laughs> she did. Not she did. Say she did. That. I swear to God. And I, and I was like, I was did like, she, I was she like, said I was like, joke. She I must was, be. no, no, no. I said, I said like, oh, please, like, you can believe in the astrology stuff in your own fucking time. Can you tell me the truth? And she said, fine. You know why? It's 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 because you know you've been in a lot of these rooms and people think that you're very difficult to work with. <gasps> did and she I, really and say I, that? And, and I was like, okay, well, when is it out of retrograde? One, two, three. <laughs> You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. Which so that's another idea I have for the opening. So I that was a fake story. <laughs> no, my my old... <laughs> How much of it was real? My old uh, uh, manager frequently blamed things on astrology. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, that's wow. why you hate it so much. You you never articulated that. <laughs> that's why I'm saying anti-astrology, because it's responsible for years of, of not working. Yeah, yeah, It would have yeah. been funny if she was like, Mercury's in retrograde, and then you were like, no, tell me the real truth. And and she was like, it's because you're hard to work with, and you're like, oh, and she was like, because you're an Aries. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Well, so I think that's my problem with astrology, is like, there is no escaping it, because I'm a Leo, and okay. so everyone goes, oh, of course, course you don't believe in it because you're a leo and leos are arrogant and it's like well i guess i'm trapped here are you an astrology same... guy i'm not thank you yeah i appreciate <laughs> Can you imagine it. if he was i mean that would be the whole, the whole... if i was like i'm very offended right now <laughs> yeah. and i could just tell <laughs> i will say this the one thing i'll say about astrology people they they don't seem to be offended even if you tell them it's the stupidest fucking thing because mm. they, they know they know you think they'll know a little bit more. i think no, no i'm not saying i'm not saying they do i'm saying like that's kind of the 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 air about it is like like even if you were to say i don't believe it i think it's bullshit blah blah blah. they're like mm-hmm. i see you know they're like mm, they, they're coming from an all-knowing kind of thing i think there's just a lot of people there where some people like don't believe in it, but they're like, it's fun to do. And other people do believe in it and they have conversations together. And I'm like, you believe in it differently. It's the same with religion. Yeah, where like religion. some people are like, the ark was real and they're having conversations with people like well, that are like the ark was a metaphor. The ark was real. <laughs> you know what would be a great Patreon is if we went to that exhibit of <gasps> the ark. <gasps> The yeah. museum, yeah, the, where they, someone actually built it somewhere in like Tennessee oh, or something. Oh, yes, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah. Like the replica. That would be fun to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, there's like people riding dinosaurs at the exhibits there because that's part of the, the chronology. Wait, really? Yeah, because the humans oh. had to exist. So I just, I, I, this is our exploring the beginning of the pod. I, we'll, we'll get to you in a second, Lucas. I, <laughs> I was talking to my dad. Like, I, th- I just feel like this, this perfectly uh, encapsulates a lot of my issues. My yeah. dad is like the more extreme version. So I talked to my dad. I made the mistake. I was like, you know, have you, have you listened to, uh, I don't even think I said, have you listened? I said, Oh, I have to go. I'm recording a podcast episode. And he was like, what's what? And I was like, Oh, it's called, it's called the downside. And he's like, okay, okay. What's a podcast. And I'm like, Oh, oh no, we're, we're not even close. We don't even understand the, <laughs> the context. It's like you, I have to now explain the language and I've explained it before. Yeah. So this is why you know there's lots of like why are we why are we close anymore, son? And it's like well because every time we talk, I have to I have to start by setting up the 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 actual the premise of my every element of my life. Yeah. Mm. So it's it's not just it's not just oh what, what's my girlfriend's name? It's what is a girlfriend? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> e- every time you know, I'm headlining I'm headlining this week. What what does that mean? What is stand up comedy? What's a microphone? I, what's amplification? It never ends. Yeah. What are sound waves? Just, I, I exactly. feel like I feel like there's a strange thing where I don't think you have to listen to podcasts. You know, I can totally get why people don't, but I do think that it's a strange thing that you can like. I don't know, drive a car and vote, but you don't know what a podcast is. Do you know what I mean? Like there's some yeah, sort of thing yeah. where hard you're, to know. you're like that checked out of like, like the world. Because on my way not, here, I was describing it to new. my mom. My, also, my mom also doesn't know what a podcast we, is. She just we doesn't. forget sometimes that we, the world is so fragmented that there are plenty of places where they don't listen to podcasts. They still listen to FM radio Yeah, yeah and yeah. they have serious XM. I'm but, not saying that people can't vote or, or drive a car if they, if they never heard of a podcast. I just think that it's like, a, we here are pro thing. more wow. obstacles to voting <laughs> yeah, yeah, here yeah, at the yeah. downside. More voter suppression. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm also supposed to say this part where uh, if you don't know what a podcast is, this is a podcast. Dad, I hope this isn't the one you figured out because I'm about to talk a little more shit about you. 
Uh, this is called The Downside. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, we, we interview people, but we focus on the negative. So, so you know, we always, we always find out people are monsters in their 50s and 60s. Usually it's when it comes out. But really, they were monsters to begin with, and it's because they had sadness as a child. And that's what this podcast is. It's about the negatives. We're, we're celebrating the negatives. We're embracing the negatives. We're not shying away from complaining because, oh, maybe it'll ruin someone else's day. Fuck someone else. This is about us today. And fuck us. And fuck us. <laughs> if you join the Patreon, that's one of the <laughs> bonuses for the tiers is you can fuck me or Russell. Uh, $15 for John Marco. <laughs> a million And me if me. you slide into my DMs. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, please join the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash downside. Uh, the, the first tier is $5 a month, but you get $5 ad free episodes, two bonus episodes a month might become four soon. We're adding video. It's fucking an amazing, we're giving you everything. Yeah. And you get to be part of, if you do $10 a month, you get to join the discord now. And I'm learning what a discord is. Uh, I but, messaged it. Did you get my you, message? I saw, I saw you joined the discord. Okay. I immediately left, but <laughs> I, I, I joined it for a Five, five seconds and left. It freaks me out that people could be in there. And it's, it's a horror. Like a it's one of these apps that feels like yeah. it's for like it's for those fucking kids who like built their own computer in high school. And you're like, OK, I like computers, but not. Yeah. yeah like yeah. my mom would always be like, you're good with computers. I'm like, I know how to save a word document, which to you is an impressive feat. Yeah. But there are kids who get it. So my dad. I'm talking to my dad. He had some health stuff and he's he's doing he's on the mend. And uh, I just want to re- recreate kind of like the phone call. So he's he's basically saying, oh, yeah, son, I, you know, I went to the doctor and they, they did an x-ray. And uh, just wait one second. Hey, hey, are you handicapped? Because you're parked in that's a handicapped spot. Are you fucking handicapped? What? Uh, you are? Okay. Okay, sorry. Oh. Just checking. Oh. So I got the x-ray back from the doctor. <laughs> and uh, oh. You know, why don't you put the sticker? Well, you maybe, maybe put the thing on the... No, no, you know what? It is my fucking business. It is my fucking business. Okay. Okay, ass head. So oh, things oh. are looking good overall. And and I'm in the and I'm listening. I'm like, it's not your fucking business, Dad. Just leave it alone. Wait, he's like, so he's not trying to park in a handicap. No, he's spot. not. He, he's he just thinks, trying to defend the rights. He of, thinks there's he's doing a, a citizen's arrest. Yes. Right he's now. doing a citizen's yeah. arrest. He thinks there's an epidemic. In America, of people lying about the handicap parking and places, food stamps. Usually, those things are going <laughs> he, hand in hand. He, well, he's he's like he's never complained about like the grander things. It's the specific okay. mm-hmm. confrontations with people right there. And I, who knows? Maybe in Potomac, Maryland, there are a lot of people fucking you know <laughs> pulling a fast one with the handicap parking. Yeah. But he makes it his business that if he sees the person and they are not visibly disabled, if they are not crawling to their car. Because they only have access to their fingers. He doubts they've it. lost their wheelchair. They've oh, lost their wheelchair. I have a question. Does yes. he do that with pregnant women? Because they can also get like the spots at the, some of the stores. Have really? you seen that? I yeah, did yeah, not yeah. know that. Yeah, well, I, 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 I come from upstate New York, so there's a lot of like strip mm-hmm. malls and, and, you know, little parkway, you know, like little, those kind of mall places. Yeah. And Walmarts and things. And yeah, that's another thing now that they have is like for, for expecting mothers. Does it have an expiration date on the... The thing? Uh, no. So you that's what I'm saying. Like you wouldn't I don't know how that one works because unless you're visibly, at the hospital when unless you you're birth. visibly Perhaps. pregnant, is it like, you know, in theory, if you're just pregnant for like three weeks, you could use it. Or best case scenario, you have a miscarriage. Do you have this thing for the rest of your life? No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. It's it's uh, it's I don't think if, what I'm saying is there's no pass. Like there's no I don't think you have a pass. It's just like a, a spot at the thing. I see. So it's just like a sign at the oh. at the thing. So I would think that if you were going to abuse one, that one's easier to abuse you than the handicap because... Uh, you never see this as an argument against abortion. This would be good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, I think it's why, you know, there's always the old trope of like, don't ask a woman if she's pregnant. But I like the other of being like, you're not pregnant, you're, you're not just pregnant. fat. <laughs> <laughs> you just want that That's handicap park. Yeah. That's my dad. Yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> well, and that's just my... That's my father. I, I don't know if we've told the story where uh, we were at a restaurant. I mean, this person was clearly horrible, but my dad was looking sad. So it must have been any day of the week. And the woman was like, you know, when you get to the gates of heaven, Jesus won't ask why you're so sad. Something something very oh. egregious. Wait, yeah. what? Like something like Jesus, Jesus uh, doesn't like care. don't be sad. He, basically, Jesus doesn't, doesn't care, care if you're sad. why you're sad. But she meant it in like... Like cheer up because it'll Jesus, all be good. Don't bum out Jesus. Oh. He died already for our sins. 
And my dad said, you know what? And double middle fingers, middle fancy oh restaurant. My. Why don't you go fuck yourself? And just a lot of my life was my dad having this angry moment and like me just standing there like, I, I hope everyone knows I'm not with him. Yeah. We look very similar, but I'm not with him. I don't endorse this behavior. Well, I hope he's listening. <laughs> I hope this is the one episode he tunes into. I hope this I is the moment care. he figures out what a podcast is. <laughs> I don't think he'd care. He knows. He knows he's got anger issues and I have anger issues. And uh, yeah, you're doing all right. Uh, yeah, I'm. I I feel a little wild. I'm, I'm traveling tomorrow really early, so I'm I'm trying to get a lot of things Where done. Where you going today. again? Uh, I'm going to Miami for a wedding. Who's wedding? Uh, Nicole's uh, stepsister. Good. Did they postpone it because of COVID? Yes. It's so. I saw something on Twitter. It was like pictures of. And it's smaller now. It's like a fifty person wedding now. Oh God, that's still too big for me. What I, was it before? What was it going to be before? Uh, you know, I think a standard like 150, 200 kind of thing. Um, but uh, and it was going to be in Mexico, but it was like at the height of COVID. So now it's not. Someone did this post on Twitter. It was just pictures from a wedding and everyone's looking in their beautiful bridesmaids dress, but they're all wearing face visors. And they're like, they're like, we're all going to look back on these photos and be like, why the fuck didn't we wait? Yeah. All these hideous wedding yeah. pictures of people yeah. wearing masks and face. I don't understand it. Um, but Lucas, thank yeah. you. How do you like that? You. As the, you are first guest where I was like, Hey, was that okay for you? Yeah. Cause we've had some guests uh, especially we just, we just had I think the episode before by the way this is com we're recording this super early this is today is uh, September 10th 2001 uh, things are <laughs> wonderful um, I've been thinking about that bit we since invented, I was taking a shower we invented podcasts we invented podcasts <laughs> we're the first one we're <laughs> and I'm already mad that people don't know what it is uh, uh, so so but uh, the, we had Carmen Lynch before and mm -hmm. like the, Carmen Lynch is just like you know comedian who's a little bit older than me, and just to have her sit there while we talked, I just felt like so, uh, like apologetic, just like to being her. really polite too. Yeah, <laughs> being polite and just like so. I wanted to figure out. So hopefully, people like this because this is what we're doing. Okay, we'll try it for a few. And what do you think of the opening with the joke? It was funny how you didn't catch um, on, and I was like, Russell, please, I just, didn't, just no, be I didn't. my sidekick on the well, couch. You keep, every time I come here, you have some <laughs> new surprise for me <laughs> to, to throw me, and so I didn't know what to expect, and I was trying to go with I it. I like, just be my Andy, Andy Rickner. Is that his name? Oh, Andy Richter. His name's Richter. Richter. Conan and Andy Richter. I, and you, you were going what? off on tangents, and you were like, well, astrology, here's my theory on astrology. I was like, Russell, shut the fuck up. <laughs> just I say, was, really? So, no. I know. Yes? That is my complaint with Andy Richter. Sometimes I'm like, more give us more that's why he's has his job because he knows he knows I, it's i, I know stop. Yeah. i agree but sometimes no i don't want to i don't want to go after andy richter on the pod i'm sorry anyways um andy I, richter Russell's i want more for him i want more from him um but thank you thank you for being here thank you so much for having now, me. now i know about you because i was i was kind of known on the scene for my fantastic john mulaney impression and then oh I go on Twitter one day. There's this fucking video. Some piece of shit, TikTok asshole, doing Mulaney, doing The Sims. And it was you. And it's so much better than mine. I look more like Mulaney. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, you're a brunette. But you got, you just have, I have, I have a couple of the, couple oh, yeah. of the Mulaney things. But yeah. you have the whole, you have depth and textures and... Okay, let's rank the Mulaney impressions. Okay. You two and Melissa Villasenor, who does it the best <laughs> out of <laughs> Now, Carrie, now you're a very nice guy. Thank you're, you. I mean, I meant that as an insult. <laughs> you, and when it comes to impressions, I think like, unlike some art forms, I think impressions, it's tough because some people do impressions. And I was like, that's not good. Yeah. And... I seen you on TikTok. You're generally supportive. I've yet to see you make a video of like, here's some fucking terrible Mulaney impressions that are way worse oh, than well, mine. Oh, well, why would he do that? That would I that love would, that, that video. Would, no, that would hurt his case as a no, good impression. You did not. He doesn't need to do that because he's good at it. Okay, let's just bring down the 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 rabble. All about right, this. all right. <laughs> see, the problem here is that you guys are assuming that that there's anything that could bring down my sense of ego because I just, I understand my supremacy. It's, it's like, just, it's there. I don't need to defend I, it. I, I'm so scared to even go it's into mine because like it's going to die. he walked into the room. Just go fuck yourself. Especially for people at home because they can't see the head. Like, it's like, you know what mm. I mean? Like, it's just yeah. audio. It sounds so well, much Well, I'm like going to lip sync it onto mine. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's going to think 
I'm the best one doing the Mulaney. Okay, please, 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 like, go in front of the camera and do, like, a full, like, 360 of your head so you can deep fake onto me. Yes, deep fake if we could combine the two of you with looks and, and voice, I yeah. think we would there be you go. on to it. Um, what's a Mulaney bit? Let's let's compare. What's what's a good Mulaney bit, you know, off the top of your head? Um, uh, hold on. So, um, uh, uh, sitting on the bench. Which one? Say it. Oh, um, so it's like, um, um, and my father came and said, uh, I saw I saw this kid get pushed off the seesaw, and my father said, mm. "And where were you? I was over on the bench." And but why didn't you stop him? No, because I was sitting over on the bench. But you saw everything. Yes, because I was sitting over on the bench. But you did nothing because I was over on the bench. Wow. Okay, you try. Oh God, that's Just that's try. not the one I want to do. Uh, uh, well, do what wait, do, what's, do, what you want. Uh, do when you want to do. No, I did not. I I can do the yelling. Uh, because I w- oh no I'm f- I'm f- I'm collapsing it's hard. into He's myself. Doing a very good one. Um, uh, we've all written happy birthday. How about a big ass B? Fuck. Um, Here now I'll try. <laughs> we've all written happy birthday. <laughs> uh, uh, was that Kermit? <laughs> It I'm was not Harvey. It was guy. Harvey I'm, Firestein. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Can you do impression. Harvey Firestein? Oh, I don't have the strength. Just, okay, now you do it. Oh, um, what should I say? Or who should I do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't have anything. No, no I did not. There's uh, one phrase that some false teeth and red hair die. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anyone you can't do? Is there oh. anyone you really suck at? Oh, so, yeah, okay. yeah, Morgan Freeman. Sure. Oh, yeah. And that was the day that I met Andy Dufresne. It's just I can do the rhythm, but the actual like the richness of the you depth, just did a really good impression no, for us. Not, that no, was no, no. that was do your Morgan Freeman. No, well we can should you? clarify. Well, no, well to be fair, okay, you're you're allowed to do a Morgan Freeman because <gasps> because your your mother yes. is half black. Yes, so I don't. I think okay. there is. Some, what are you going to say? Well, uh, genuinely, in my opinion, as long as like okay, well, there is a li- there is a lot of. Um, so, for those who don't know, I make my living as a voiceover artist. Um, and yeah, sorry, the, sorry, we didn't introduce our guest properly. He's a, yeah, a talented voiceover performer. That is the performer. problem with the way we did the new thing. Is we kind of yeah. glossed. I over. said it at the very beginning. No, I know, but then okay. they forget by the time he comes in. Right? Your voiceover anyway, artist. Yes. So, um, but in the voiceover community recently, there was a lot of drama because there was a voice actress uh, who will re- remain nameless, who is white, but she has a pseudonym under which she does like. A black woman voiceover. Oh no! And, what is the pseudonym, though? I I can't say. I I can't oh, say right okay. now. Oh, okay. Oh. Can you tell this? Is the pseudonym like <laughs> like a name <laughs> like that a, you're like? It's, oh, that's it's not. It's too. not. It's very. It's very sort of a neutral name. Okay. But it's but basically like. And then she came under fire because like she was pretending to have this quality and stamping it with like this is what a black woman sounds like oh. when really it's just a person and she just sounds. And so I don't think. If you said this is my impression of a black person, that would be bad. But if you just say hey, this is my Morgan Freeman impression, it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are because you're just doing one single person. Is that is? Do you feel like that's a consensus in the voiceover community right now? I, th- I mean, if you just said, "Hey, this is my Morgan Freeman impression," no one would think that. I don't think anyone would think that that's you being racist or taking opportunities away from him. And like, if you from him, <laughs> yeah, from him, <laughs> we were gonna have Morgan Freeman yeah. narrate this the Penguins marching. No, we're gonna have John Marcus. Oh, okay, um, wow. No, but if you um, no, I think you can. Well, like, there's a there's a voice actor called Eric Bowser who's um. He's Filipino Canadian, but he does a really good Chris Rock, and I don't think there's anything. And even if he was white, I don't think there's anything wrong I, with like Jimmy doing a Chris I, Rock no, impression. I think people are like Jimmy Fallon got a lot of flack. I mean, he did well, it. That once. was blackface. Well, okay, but he yes, that that was one thing. But he also did it like on award shows, not in blackface. Okay, and I think it's generally. I feel like the consensus yeah. right now is uh, yeah, don't even do that. Uh, especially like. Uh, I mean, Jenny Slate dropped out of uh, fucking well, that's, Big well, that's, House. That's different because she wasn't trying to be... Well, she was actually doing a black character, which could have gone to a black actor. That's the point, is that it, it, it wasn't used... It, it could have been an opportunity for a black actor, and that's why she uh, and that's why she got lit up for it. That's that's my understanding. That, well, no, that, that is the understanding. It just feels like it's all just feels so tricky with voiceover. Is, yeah. I know voiceovers where... The breakdown says they want a, a black person, and it's like it's it's for Pepsi. There's nothing about it; like it's not a character the person is playing, but they essentially want a certain kind of sound, right? And they're they're and then identifying it comes down to that sound as a is black that sound. sound. It, yeah. yeah, and it's like, well, that seems problematic already. 
Yeah. No, I do not. There it is. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> um. So your view is? Yeah, my view is is that if it's if it is a a black character and whatever thing, then it should probably go to a black actor. But if you're just like having fun, maybe showing like um like Frank Caliendo does a great Morgan Freeman impression, and mm. but it but it's it's very clear like what he's and he does like a bunch of others and it's just it's just a good impression and i don't think there's anything problematic about it because it's not like him trying to do but it's just a talent that he has he's really good at impressions yeah. and that's just one in his wheelhouse and so it it all comes down to like being genuine i guess and not pretend it's not being something that you're not yeah it's I th- like yeah i think the problem is it's been so abused for so exactly. long yeah like just a white person doing like the most yeah, and there's also it's... like there, there's no like agreed upon parameters that is just set for everyone. Like we haven't like sat down and said like what isn't isn't okay. It's just like we're trying to like work our way through a forest almost. Do you mm-hmm. think that? I I I totally agree. I I just don't even know whether like there's certain jobs. Are there certain jobs? Have you ever uh, applied for a job where it might made the breakdown set a black person and you had to be like, okay, here's my headshot, and maybe you I don't know you you change the the headshot the uh the lighting of it to make to bring out your mom as best as you could so that you'd be right for the role <laughs> just to bring but out like, features right re- <laughs> but people people don't know i mean i i'm yeah. saying you 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 look i would say yeah. you're just a, a jewish a jewish boy like me yeah. with your curly your dad's jewish yes okay um but yeah i would if if it was a if it was a breakdown that said that this is a black character or they're looking for a black actor i wouldn't audition for it really oh no Really? That's yes. interesting to me. Oh, no. All, all my friends in the voiceover community, they, they say the same thing. And and what's really cool is that we, because we have like a good network, they'll say, hey, we know about this uh, this character that they've just opened up. If you if you are a black actor or a Latino or whatever it is, um, they, they, they're looking for this, maybe South Asian. And they're like, hey, we're looking for an, an actor of this ethnicity or this background. Please audition for it. It's wide open for you. Like, that's the thing that will very often happen. And it's really cool. Now... Because I, I just remember I was looking through all your TikToks, many TikToks, uh, and what's you, your you had some bit. What's your What's my favorite? Well, the other one people sent me, and this is where it really started getting. Oh out of my yeah. Skin. Oh, oh yeah. I know. Well, the I know fucking, this one. <laughs> yeah. The Italian Jewish one. Yeah. Where like, you're not even Italian, motherfucker. No. So it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why don't you give that to someone? You piece of shit. Uh, I. Everyone sent it because I. I mean, I probably. Again, like I'm like sort of Jewish. I'm sort of Italian, and I have Italian jokes and Jewish jokes. I had like a couple tries at an Italian Jewish joke, you know, some general mm-hmm. joke about it, and nothing too funny. Jokes about matzah pizza. I had a whole sketch series called Matzah Pizza, oh. and then you come it along did, and did. just you 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 flip the whole script. And what it, what is it again? Uh, it's um, uh, I think it's pretty weird that w- that. People that are half Italian and half Jewish are affectionately called a pizza bagel when they could so much more easily be called a mozzarella stick. And I, th- I think that's a good. I think it's that's a good funny. pun. I think. Yeah, everyone and else did too. Apparently, <laughs> funny. Yeah, um, John Marco, from the bottom of my heart, I'm disappointed you didn't come up with it. I, no. <laughs> if people, that's what people wrote me. They're like, yeah. some for some reason when you're a comedian, everyone's like, let me send you other successful comedians, yeah. like friends and family who are not in comedy, or like, hey, here's someone else who's funny yeah. and doing better than you. You want to see? So like, 25 that's, people that's, sent me that video. That's why Matzo Pizza didn't take off because if you had a creative <laughs> name. <laughs> Like mozzarella stick, it would have mozzarella stick. It would have really hooked people in. Well, well, that's not great. that it didn't take off, but you know, it's on. It's not on. You're making now. it worse. Sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, so no. I remember the TikTok. I give you free reign to use if you like start another podcast. You can call it mozzarella sticks, and I, I give you full. I give you full ownership of that. Don't, don't tempt Make him. Make sure we're recording on To be fair, <laughs> uh, did, someone did comment under it that I didn't see before saying, uh, that I think it was like a Jewish chef that made like some sort of like mozzarella sticks that has like matzah in it and like the crust around the mo- around the mozzarella. And so and so that exists as a recipe, mm. mozzarella sticks. So that, so f- f- credit where it's due, sure. that has existed. So it's now public domain. Yeah, Anyone can use it. Well, yeah, guys, like I also I want to announce my next special coming up. Uh, it's called Mozzarella Stick. Nice. Coming to YouTube soon. No, I saw the story. It was about, it was you, it was a, it was a stitch, and it was you uh, being at the airport with your mom. Yeah. And uh, uh, explain it to, to us. Oh, yeah, no. So um, the story about, like, me with my mom is that, um, so as you mentioned, like, my mom is half black, half white, and she also has a Muslim last name. Um, and so we got stopped a lot at airport security cause they thought I was her hostage 
And for those of you who are, uh, they say that outright. They said, "Excuse me, Miss, is this your hostage?" Like, or you just no? They, they just w- were concerned. No, this is what what would and well, another thing with it is Do that this is terrorists usually bring their hostages. Through bring the hostage like, through through TSA, <laughs> like through the TSA, they don't I, usually bring. Is their that kids? a regular no. thing that happens? It just is why would he know? Just because his mom. No, I'm just saying like that's a it's just a <laughs> strange thing to yeah. be like you know. No, but, but what happened was that they um it was like my mom told me this one time that we were flying from New York to London, or a lot of my family is, and that we were held at airport security there, and a big Cockney uh, TSA agent was like, right. Who's your mom? Like to me. And was like, it was like, you can tell me. And I was, and this was before I could speak, but I could still understand him. So I was like, my mom was just holding me like by her hip and I just pointed to her. I was like, this lady, <laughs> I was just like her. That She's is, the one I know here. so upsetting. Yeah. And that, and, um, and that only got worse after 9-11. We've been held from flights. Really? Oh yeah, there, we there was one time we had a connecting flight like um, from New York to London, but we stopped off in Toronto, and we missed our connecting flight to London from Toronto, oh. and then we were put on another flight to Montreal, and then to it was it was bad. They just what, they just doing background checks and stuff. I guess yeah, they were very yeah very suspicious of us. But what's what's interesting is that like um, when I was fifteen, that was when I started occasionally flying alone, and I was like, wait. No one's stopping me. Oh, this is amazing. No. I was, that was like, cause like, obviously like uh, for, if you don't see me right now, I have like, my hair was a lot blonder when I was younger, but I have fair skin, blue eyes, blonde dish hair. And like when I was younger, I looked even whiter than I do now. And like, it was, even though I've had like white privilege my whole life, that was a moment where I got just a little extra nugget of it yeah. where I was able to take, I was just like, cause my name is Lucas Arnold. It's a very, it's you go through the metal detector. You're just standing there. They're like, "Sir, what are you doing?" You're like, "Are we going in the room now?" Yeah. Were you interrogate me Do for I need three time hours? Buckle? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they ne- no, they never, they never uh, thingied me. Um, that never happened. But uh, but we were held a lot, and I, it was a thing like growing up that I just understood. Oh, we need to leave like an extra hour before just to deal with security in case anything happens. Just yeah. like leave at li- get to the airport at least three hours before your oh flight. My God. Just because like. Anything could happen. And oh. yeah. And so I just grew up with that as like the norm. And then later on, I was like, I can just get there an hour before. I don't even need. This is <laughs> this is OK. Do you know one time I realized my extreme white privilege at a at a airport? Um, I was going through and I can't remember where I was coming from, but it was somewhere where I needed headshots and I was like still cutting them out at the time. And I had the largest pair of scissors that oh I've ever God. seen. I, I, can't, I can't believe I own these pair of scissors. And <laughs> Wait, how long uh, are these they were, they just, were like, just like, I mean, think of normal scissors, uh-huh. like normal adult scissors and then add like two inches like so so big. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. like, these are big scissors. And um, uh, they were my backpack. And I was going through and they stopped me and they were like, they looked and they measured and they said, ah, it's too big, but it's, you're fine. And I remember being like, you should probably take yeah. those scissors. Like, yeah. like, this is a situation where I would have been like, no, you should take these scissors from oh me. Like this, I could do anything with these on sure. the plane, you know? Well, as you know, I think white privilege is a myth. Uh, I can but tell. No, let's go, I, let's no, go no, no. into an ad. <laughs> Take it to an ad. Commercial. <laughs> um, no, I will always remember, this is pre-9-11 too. This is mm-hmm. always pre-9-11, but my family and I went to... Well, this is getting recorded on September 10th. Right, yes, you're right. Yes, yes. Pre-9-11, right. So things are great. Airport is super easy breezy. Cover girl. I was in Mexico, mm-hmm. and we were coming back from Mexico, and the system in Mexico at the time was you, you went there, and there was like... A, like a street light like uh and it, you just waited and they quote unquote randomly it right. would flash red and they'd search your bag or green and they just let you right through and uh knowing the way the world works now i have a feeling that the people at the desks like had a button underneath that if they're like this person looks fishy red 100%. light uh but at the time it was just like yeah we'll cut down on terrorist attacks by 50 percent with this randomizing system and that's how they did it. Yeah. Wow. It all feels pretty, I don't know. I, I, people always have stories. They, they they leave a knife in their bag and it gets through TSA. It's hard to believe that this is doing anything. Oh, even without like the occasional odd item in your bag. Like I have a great aunt who I think is a fashion designer and she's just not been allowed in the country for like 15 plus years or something like that. And like my granddad is a painter. He still like has trouble entering the country it's like without a visa, it's it's difficult. It's just, 
It's just a, this has just been like a very regular conversation my whole life that I've just been aware of. Oh. So yeah, your whole family's just you're like, go ahead, oh, Lucas, yeah. go go back to America. But what is funny is that um, in my senior year of college, and for my so my neither of my parents came to see like the shows that I did in college, and I was a theater major, and. Um, but for my final play in college, my mom came to uh, see me. And um, this was like right after. Did you see that video where like this like it's like an Asian man in glasses and he gets like dragged off the plane because oh, they yeah. need someone to volunteer. Yeah, to I remember. Off. Yes, yes, yes. And um, oh, it was a and it was a United flight. And my mom said, hey, I'm coming to see you, by the way. Guess what airline I'm coming in on? And I was like. Oh no, don't tell me it's United. And she was just like, ha, 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 ha. She just like had this cackle. And then she came through fine. She came through airport security totally fine. And yeah, my mom maybe, is like- Maybe they switched from like Muslim last names to just older Asian yeah. men. That's now the target of all these yeah. airlines. She did also just get American citizenship by that time. Oh, okay. So oh. I think that might You think that helped. changed it? I think so. It's, uh, I hate airports. Yeah. Um, you know what sucks is that growing up, I loved airports. I always loved it. Because like, you spent most of your life there waiting for your mom I to know, get through. Yeah. So you're like, I love the food here. But yeah. I had Heelys as a kid and airport floors. Oh, that's the, wow, that's wow, the wow. place for Heelys. Really? Airport floors? Oh, yeah. They're so smooth. I definitely they're love so the moving broad. sidewalks. That's always I fun. Oh, that's a fun. Now, do you stand or do you walk with them? Um, I walk against you walk again? <laughs> oh, yeah. And oh. it looks, before, I learned how to moonwalk because uh, I was obsessed with the moonwalk. And before you could do that, that was like the cheap man's moonwalk is just walk against the um, automated walkway. Oh, One of the scariest moments I had as a kid was I got on the, the escalator going the wrong way. So I'm like moving down, but my parents are up yeah. and I'm trying to get to them. But the escalator is moving me down. Yeah. And I like, had this crisis of like, I, I can't, I can't beat the escalator. I start sobbing and my parents are like, just, just go down, <laughs> just go down and come back up. But I was, I had a meltdown. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> so, so, uh, we're going to talk about voiceover. I don't even know. So let's, you are yeah. Jewish too. Cause everyone seems to be Jewish somehow in this podcast. Everyone is. But who's some, Jewish? My dad. Your dad. I was not raised Jewish. I was not raised Jewish at all, um, but raised completely without religion. Um, yeah, yeah, nothing. Do you did you do birthright? No, 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 no. It's a great Have time. You? I did. This was before Israel was problematic, though. A couple was years it ago. Before <laughs> I, uh, it's listen. I mean, I I cannot endorse it. And we're at this moment, but it was a very good trip. Very mm. little propaganda at the time. It was a bunch of so soldiers joined your trip, and all our soldiers were very kind of. Uh, were they attractive? Uh, they were attractive, they were, but they were all, all seeing people. They were all kind of taken. They were all, okay. they should make it single soldiers. Because then I would recommend I it. heard, cause I know people that have done birthright and they say this, they show you a bunch of like super attractive, uh, soldiers to be like, Hey, They're stay all in the country a little bit longer than you were expecting. Yeah, Why don't yeah, yeah. you? Ours was very little propaganda and all, all the soldiers were very like, uh, leftist. I mean, they were very okay. like uh, critical of, of Israel's government. I, it was a free vacation. Yeah. That's why I went at the time. I did not do my research. And I think I told you, I went to a show where I did a story about Birthright. And like so afterwards, this guy walked up and he's like, so you drank the Kool-Aid, huh? Oh. And I was like, oh, no, I just wanted the nice free hummus. But uh, so don't go now. But if, if Israel, oh, you know, I'll be honest, I'm kind of like a, I've. I was talking to a friend about it like a couple years ago. He was like, dude, it's a free trip. I was like, I don't really want to. I know what they're trying. I don't feel it. I'm really not feeling it. I've also been like, I've, I, growing up, I wasn't that close with like my Jewish family members, and most of them are lovely, lovely people. Like especially like my dad died recently, and a couple of them are reached out to say like, "Hey, we're so sorry to hear he loved you so much. We're so proud of everything you've done." It's very sweet stuff. But uh, going to visit like my grandmother in Florida, she died when I was ten, but I, but my dad's mom, she uh, she lived in Florida, and going to visit her, I was sheltered a lot from shit that my mom experienced, quite racist stuff, and. And but later on, she told me about it, and she told me that like, uh, like there was a pool across the street from my grandmother's building, and my mom would take me there, and that like old Jews, uh, they would be like, oh, is she gonna get in the pool too? She's not gonna get in the pool. Oh, she's getting in the pool. Oh, she's getting in the and like, and I was totally blissfully unaware. They all of this. John Mulaney relatives yes. for the back. <laughs> oh no, she's getting. They in were the all pool. characters from Big Mouth. Um, um that's yeah. uh horrible. Yeah. Can I, is there anything so like? Like, is there certain things where you're like, fuck, I, your mom had this whole experience with that kind of shit that you might not have just because of the, you know, the way you, you look. Yeah. I mean, and did, did she like, 
did, was there an age where she like started sharing these experiences or you started noticing it more? It wasn't noticing it. It was her telling me. It was mm. because like I've I've seen like my Jewish family, like I see them very few and far between times. It's like if someone gets bar mitzvahed or dies, that's really it. Um, and it was my mom like letting me in on stuff later on, like in sort of like late teens. That's when she started telling me stuff. Also one time when um, also visiting my grandmother in Florida where I was like maybe three and my mom was just holding me on her lap and that like old ladies who were like, very close family friends of my grandmother, they started playing matchmaker for my dad, pretending that my mom and I didn't exist. Oh, we were in the room. My God. They were speaking at full volume. Yeah. What the <laughs> fuck? Wait. This is, this is who? This is your dad's this mother? This is my dad's mom, uh, her close friends over in the living room for like- And like out acting. loud, just like being monstrous. I mean, that's monstrous behavior. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so, and and- I need to I need to make this clear in case like any family members like most of my family members that I've met and know on a first they're lovely people who never who honestly probably didn't weren't weren't there in the room they were just all lovely people who were very sweet to my mom and myself most of them are fine but like that's but good. it was like a couple instances like that that my mom told me about that just made me it made me feel very angry and very protective knowing that that's yeah. something that she experienced and that she just sheltered me from amazingly and the. It's worrying knowing that someone can shelter you that well from something because it's like, yeah. oh shit, what else is there? It's like there's a lot. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad they didn't call you after your dad passed. I'm like, well, you don't have any parents anymore now, because you, know, <laughs> you never had a mom. I guess. What? It's a- like my mom is John Cena. Just like, oh, I'm sorry, you're in these photos alone. <laughs> um. Well, I, I'm of course sorry to hear about your dad. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. I. You know, I, I saw it on, on TikTok. I was like, oh, funny, funny video. And I'm like, oh, shit, you did a, a serious one. Yeah. That got a lot of likes. It did. Well, um, I was well, <laughs> genuinely, it, I just thought, okay, there's bound to be some people that have like iffy relationships with their with one or both of their parents, they might find this valuable and like a good few people like message me. And I was like, good. It was worth it then. That's I think good. it's totally worth it. I think it's just like, it's always interesting. We all have different relationships to social media and yeah. like, I think there's there's some there's like some people who like lean on emotional stuff where it's it's just strange. I think social media is such a weird fucked up system where we are all putting things on there essentially to get attention and likes and boost yeah. our profile. And then uh, uh, your video was was lovely and it was earnest. But we, we've been talking recently. There's someone on Twitter where it feels like they're like manipulating. They're 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 Ooh. using like emotional pain as like a constant source for content and like you get, or maybe you get comfort and it's like, is it meaningful? But there's strangers and this, it's like the whole platform to me is so poisoned. It's, it, yeah, this it's is what hard. I feel about people that live like their whole lives online yeah. where they, you see like everything about them and they sort of like, it, it really seems like they can't have a normal relationship without them trying to monetize it or use it for content or something. And yeah. that really creeps me out. I, I agree. I think that thing, about it as I think people can have like some sort of, you know, you can start off by sharing something that makes you vulnerable and blah, 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 and, and other people share and that's helpful to them and you, blah, blah, blah. But there is sometimes a thing of like, then when you see it go beyond a, a point where you start being like, but then this is helping you. And that kind of is, there's a sadness to that, that, that you're like yeah. that, that it can be that much of a source of your thing where all of your content yeah. Everything that you're putting out there is that, yes, that weird Inside thing, and you're like, you're, it's like impossible to keep that going because you're like, at oh, some yeah, point, it's, it well, feels it's not healthier to be sustainable. Yes, if yes. you sustain it, it's not healthy. Yes, yes, yeah. I said I'm a little bit worried because I like I posted a video early today making a joke about my dad's death. Yeah. Good for you. I mean, yeah. you know, that's what you yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if it's what you wanted to do. What were you yeah. worried about it? You oh were... no, because inside I was thinking, oh shit, am I like, am I am I having a bad attitude towards like my own? Oh like, no. dealing with yeah, yeah. That was... Well, I think that's what what's tough about it. Yeah, I, I think in general, like I'm like of a mindset right now where I'm like never sincere. Like maybe I'll, if I'm going to be sincere, I'll retweet. I'll repost other people's things, but I'm not a journalist. But you I'm not can a be health sincere professional. in funny stuff. You can be sincere in funny stuff, but I'm always like, I, I, it, no, it feels safer for me to like, yeah. I, if if I, I'm not going to express a vulnerability because getting the messages, even saying sweet things for me, it doesn't touch my heart. Like I if I, if I need emotional support, like I'm going to see you or I'm going to see my friends or I'm going to talk to my therapist. That's the only thing that's going to like touch 
my heart. To me, like comments and likes and shares and we love you, we support you. It all like enters like it's, it doesn't do anything to me. It's not a person to me, flesh and blood who knows me. Yeah. This is also how I feel about like people posting like really personal stuff like oh my god it's this per it's like one of my besties birthday today i love her so much and it's like a bunch of photos that they post and i'm just like you could just say happy birthday or have a phone call or a day with your friend and make that meaningful to that person but like making it something that you post about online that really creeps me out and that mm -hmm. really bothers me is like yeah it's interesting how everyone has weird things like everyone has specific things on social media that you're like for some reason this makes me is so strange to me and i think everyone has their own things um comedians what's when interesting a, about it when a famous comedian dies and jp mcdade kind of did a very good tweet uh, isolating this so check mm -hmm. him out but but it was something just like oh this person died uh they were amazing i remember when i opened for them in st louis and they said to me like you you're the best comedian i've ever seen you should have a netflix special someday all these posts like oh, it becomes God. about them, them. Yeah. yeah and it's all just like I, I think it's weird that like when people die, I mean, God, if you're a celebrity, Wait, we, have we talked about, we, t I can't remember if we talked about in the podcast that one person's, or was that a practice podcast? The one time where I talked about that person's nine 11. Oh, tell the nine 11, please. I, oh, think, please I can't remember if it was, uh, we talked about this already on the podcast, but I'll be quick. But anyways, I saw this year on nine 11, I saw that this person I know on Facebook posted this long thing. And it was like this person every year posts the same kind of thing where basically it's like, um, I'll never forget where I was on 9-11. You know, that kind of post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they go through and they give every sort of detail on where they were in 10th grade English class and their teacher was wearing this and they do this whole long thing. And they'll be like, and I'll never forget that my English teacher, Mr. Miller, he was frantically trying to call his daughter who worked in the Twin Towers. And... Um, and he was just, he was so worried that whole day, not knowing how his daughter was. I'll never forget that. And, and then, so then you read this and you're like, well, what the fuck happened to his daughter? So I'm, but I'm like, I don't know this person. I'm not going to comment, mm -hmm. but I'm watching the post. I'm like, so someone goes, did you ever find out happening? What happened to his daughter? And this woman goes, honestly, I don't know. And you're like, what the fuck is the Jesus point of this Christ. story then? If you're like, I for 19 years, I've been like, I remember where I was and I'll never forget how worried my teacher was. And then you just had no sort of follow up to be like, oh, actually his daughter, because you know the answer is that his daughter was fucking fine. Because if your English teacher's daughter died in 9-11, you would yeah. remember. So I'm like, why are you sharing this story? It's barely a story for your English teacher to tell now. Now. I mean, it. you know, they could, but you're like, you have and to share it year after year with no follow up. Like, why? Find Mr. Miller on Facebook. Contact oh him. God. Say, is your daughter alive? <laughs> no, you don't, you don't is want to your do that. daughter alive? What have been 19 years you used to contact? Hey, just, I do, I've been telling this story a while. Whatever happened to your daughter? 19, 19 she died, years later, Gregory. they're still searching through the rubble. They're just, <laughs> it's like, oh my God. God. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's those kind of insane posts where you're like, you're turning this whole, you're turning a, a, this thing in, in, through your own eyes and it's a human thing we all do it and to varying degrees sometimes but sometimes it's so outrageous on social media yeah that that's the thing i think it's just posts in general the goal is to get likes and so it all feels exactly. tainted everything feels tainted yeah in a way there's no pure intention behind it it can't be because of just the nature of how social media is set up i think yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. thing it does remind me though like i do have a friend who um uh, a friend of mine from college who is a lighting designer and his 9-11 story is it's one of my favorite what is things. It? Well, he like, so he grew up in Connecticut and he was at home sick. Um, and he, I think he was like six years old at 9-11. So he was at home sick in Connecticut. His dad worked in New York City and was sent home early just for like safety and he was fine. Um, but he was sent home early and he arrives home to see his son, my friend, who was watching the news, didn't realize it was the news, thought it was a movie. And he was like, Dad, special effects in this movie are amazing. Oh. And he was just like, I'm sorry, son. I can't deal with this right now. Oh, my God. That's how I knew it was serious. When I went home, my stepdad was came home from work, which was pretty oh. rare. And he was just watching the TV like like wow. a hawk. Wow. And it was I was like, because when I was when it, when it happened, I was in like fifth grade. I didn't know how bad a thing it was. Like I knew I thought like, Wait, oh, how old are you? I was. uh you would have been 10-ish or... 10-ish or 11-ish. 11-ish. So, like, in my mind, I was like, well, bad things happen all the time in the world. 
this is just a w- one of the bad things. Right. I didn't realize like, oh, this is going to like change America. Oh yeah, this oh, is going to change how yeah. we all. I have no memory of the day, and I grew up here. I have no. You just memory. turned twenty six. Yeah, I just turned twenty six. I was six years old uh, oh, when when I six on nine eleven. Yeah, to be safe. <laughs> I remember the, the next day at school. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the beginning of a Frank Sinatra song. Oh, to be six on nine eleven. <laughs> I all I remember is that like the next day, like there were some third graders with like a toy plane in the hallway, and oh, they were like joking oh, about like having no. a plane. Oh, and I said God. to them, I said, "Hey, that is not a laughing matter." Like yeah. I was like a fifth grader, like scolding them. And now I've dedicated my life to making nine eleven jokes. Yeah, I'm working on a new one right now, and it it bombed yeah. yesterday. Good. Don't run it by Good me. choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, let's take our commercial break. Okay. And we're back. I um, so your father. I were your parents mm-hmm. married? They were. The, they were married. Um. I, well, yes, I got that. They were. They were on route. They were. They were in a legal battle for a divorce for the past four years. Mm. Like straight after I graduated from college, and it was very because I was also like caught right in the middle of it, and it was also like sort of a battle over property. And mm. it was, it was very, it was, it was for ownership of the apartment that I live in, that I grew up in. Sure. And it, um, good apartment. It was a very good apartment. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so it was thought that like my mom and I would retain ownership of this apartment and my dad would, uh, keep our property in upstate New York. And then my dad tried to, uh, take ownership of the apartment and all of the property for himself by basically ripped it the rug out from under us and had like a, he had a lawyer that behind our backs and then my mom had to get a lawyer. And so they were, so you, you, you were team mom from the get. Yeah. Like, like it was like you, mm. did you feel like you were part of this? Oh, absolutely. Tri- really? I, well, I was Brutal. part of, I was part of the fight and then it was, it was really tough because my dad also, he, cause when it started happening, it came to both me and my mom as a surprise. And then, and my mom is like, uh, your dad isn't saying anything to me. I called him. He's not. He's he's not saying he can speak to me. Call him to find out what's happening. I was like, oh, okay. And so I called him. and He said, I'm so sorry. My lawyer says I can't talk to you about it. Oh, and I was I'm like, so sorry. I said, That's what? And I, this n- never happened in my life. Where, and he said, I'm so sorry. I'm not at liberty to discuss this. And I was like, well, we don't have a relationship then. And so for two years, we just communication was at a bare minimum occasionally like he would still get mail to like my place like home and so i would meet with him to like give him his mail and we just you just slid it over and walked away or was it, it? we literally just meet up at a train station like a drug oh deal <laughs> oh, and it was man. just like here's your mail and then i would just walk away i wouldn't i would n- no fat on the on the wow. meeting and that would go on for two years until my dad got a new lawyer and the lawyer was like, yeah, you can talk to your son about this. And he was like, thank. And he was really glad about it. And then he told me, basically confirmed every suspicion that I had. And I thought, okay, I'm, uh, life is short. Try to have a relationship with your dad. But the thing is, like, there was, like, little things happened that were, like, just didn't tell me about it. And then, so we were very on and off. And then, uh, and then last, uh, last December, he got diagnosed with cancer. And it was like it was, and it was like stage four with metastases elsewhere in his body, and it was like it was really rough. How old is he? He was uh, seventy six. He turned seventy seven oh. this year. Oh wow! So wow. he was an older. Yeah, he, he he was fifty one when I was born. Wow! Didn't look it. Looked way younger. He took really weirdly good care of himself. Mm-hmm. It was very strange. Um, but yeah, and it was interesting. Like, uh, so last week was my birthday, and I had brunch with my mom because my mom is helping me with like funeral arrangements and stuff. And while we were having brunch. Um, she said, I don't want to like to speak too much about your dad, but I just, I hope you know that he would wish you a happy birthday today and that he loved you so much. And I was like, yeah, he forgot to wish me happy birthday last year. He didn't. Mm. And then she was, and then she was like, like, don't you dare. They will use that (laughs) in court against you. You wish him a happy birthday. You want him to have the apartment. There you go. (laughs) No, but, and then she was, and then, and then she tried to like salvage it a little bit. She was like, maybe he was just busy with stuff and he forgot to call. And I was like. (laughs) No, 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 mom. He called me, but forgot to oh, wish me happy boy. birthday. <laughs> he asked. It was oh. some sort of logistical thing, maybe like mail. It was something oh. else, but it was it was just a call. And I was like, is that it? And he was just like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then yeah. the next day he was oh. like, I'm so sorry. I forgot. I was like, okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Um, it's brutal. My dad's, so, my dad's forgotten my birthday once. Oh, and my it, God. it really felt like. I know I'm a forgetful person, okay, and I don't think it's necessarily always indicative of caring. It's partly just a, a bad character f- flaw, but yeah. it, but it 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 did feel it like hurts. It, there's, there's no a way thing it, of yeah. like I'm your son. You were there. 
I'm also you his were only... there for the day. I'm also his only child. I, he has no other children. You're right. My dad right. is too. That is right. brutal. Right. Uh, so it's not as bad for you. <laughs> 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 um. So yeah. you you got to spend. Did you got to see him a, a, a little as? Well, what happened was like it was um, it was, so. My dad died on May 8th, and so that was a Saturday. And the when, and so, like, Tuesday that week, um, my dad was, he was on his way upstate to stay with some, like, family friends upstate. And that on the way up, um, he his condition just, like, really worsened, and he was taken to a hospital um, upstate. And then the next day, I was getting calls from these family friends being like, hey, um, he's really, he's not going to last very long get up here as soon as you can, if you can to like spend some final moments with him and just take advantage of this time. Mm -hmm. And so I like frantically just like put together some bags and I got an Uber, a $700 Uber. <gasps> $700. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, so this from where to where time? One more time. Uh, from Brooklyn to Cooperstown, New York. It was a four, four and a half hour drive. Oh, I'm kind of shocked. Like even you could get an Uber. Me too. Like it was, it, it was also the Uber was a drivers got to be like, Oh, Okay. Yeah. I was still, I was very surprised. It was a great driver. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I forget his name, but like, did he make a comment? You. Like when you got in, like your dad must be dying or something. Is oh, there no, someone I dying? I, t I, I did tell him, I was like, Hey, this is me like rushing to see my dad who's dying. Thank you very much for driving. Uh, and he was like, yeah, of course it was, it was very, he was just very quiet. Did he, he just, put out music after that? No. You know, like, sometimes <laughs> it just reminded me of like, you said that. And then he's just like, puts on like, I'm on a highway to <laughs> hell. Yeah. Um, but what the wow. interesting is that like, I brought, I brought some food in the car with me. But I was afraid to eat it because I was afraid of ruining my Uber rating. Oh my <laughs> Even God. though I was like, I, I'm do I'm trying to do this as a bit because like on one hand I was like, that's a great bit. I, you I, have I'm, to. Oh, I, oh yeah, and like. I was like, on one hand, you know, I want to have my energy to spend like a final moments with my dad. But on the other hand, I can't go down to 4.7 after I work so hard to get to 4.9. This is, <laughs> oh, this is it gives you a it's like, this kid bummed me out. Bummer of a passenger. Bummer of a passenger. Did not want to talk. <laughs> Your dad's dying. <laughs> so what do you do? Yeah. Um, so you did, you were I able did. to get there. I was able to get there. I got there at like 1130 p.m. Um, and then it was a family friend who I was coordinating with and like, she stayed with me and we got really close over like a couple days that I was upstate and, um, and she was there for like the night of, and then I went to see, stay with another friend who my dad was going to stay with originally. Um, and so I stayed there for like a couple nights. And so Thursday and Friday, I just spent each whole day in the hospital, just like by my dad. And wow. it was, it was really off because like before I got there, um, this woman who she put her phone up to my dad and said, if in case you don't make oh. it in time, you can say some final words. And my dad sounded like Darth Vader. That yeah. was Because like the breathing, like the death rattle, that's what it sounds like over the phone. It's really weird. And then like, and then in person, it was, it was so much worse, but there it was, was so one, much worse in person. Oh, it was so much oh, worse. The, the cause, sound, cause, yeah. Because it was also like my dad's face was like so much more like gaunt and very, yeah. Yeah. just like strung out. And then. I think it was on the Friday that I um, I was by my dad and the woman who I was staying with, um, she texted me and she, and she said, um, because my dad is also like very spiritual, um, mm -hmm. which I don't know. But, um, and so he had a lot of very hippy dippy friends upstate who she was one of them. And she I tell you though, if you're going to go, I want hippy dippy friends with me. I don't no, need a friend. Really? Let me tell you why. Okay. Tell me oh, why. No. Because <laughs> what happened was, so this woman who I was staying with, she texted me and she was like, Lucas, do you meditate? And I was like, why are you asking? <laughs> and she said, um, because I am right now and I'm communicating with your father. He oh. has something he oh, wants to tell no. you. No. What, 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 what was it? <laughs> Fuck if I know. <laughs> oh, you said no, that. No, I don't no, no, know. no. But here's what happened. She's like, she was like, try to meditate with your dad and like, and just like close your eyes and just try to listen with your heart and like, and breathe in time with him. She told me to try to breathe in time with him. But the thing is when a person's, I learned this, when a body is shutting down, it needs less and less oxygen because it's just running fewer functions yeah. in the body. So the gaps between his breaths got longer and longer. And I was trying to breathe in time with him and, it, and I was getting dizzy. I was like, wait, bitch, are you trying to kill me too? What the oh, fuck? Oh God. And, God. So she didn't say it's, what she was. That's hard with the, the, the like the hippy dippy thing. I feel like I can dip into hippy dippy and really meet someone's hippy dippy at their level. I don't want, yeah. but messages. I never want to like, like 
I would ne- like to go to that thing is like sure. very, you know. To me, specificity is the enemy of spiritual feeling. Yes. Oh, yeah. And so there's just like a, a no, a, what is he saying? Don't give mom the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, it's, it's, I'm saying like to, if I'm dying, I want to be with people who are like, you're going in the, to the, the, the consciousness of God. And I'm yeah. like, yes, 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 yes. Oh, no, but, and, uh, but the, woman who I wasn't staying with, who was like a closer friend of my dad and who I got close with. She also like said that she could read people very well. And she said that she could tell what like my father was saying. And she was, and she's like, just, and she's like, what I'm getting from your dad is he's just trying to say, I love you. Like, that's just what he's saying. And I thought I'm going to choose to believe that. That's what I'm going to choose to believe. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and she holds, she also said at one point that like, cause I was also like just fighting through tears that she's like, your dad's spirit is standing beside you and his hand is on your shoulder. Um, and then, but later on she said, I think he's back in his body right now. (laughs) And (laughs) (laughs) Oh, he's dancing around now. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) but here's the thing is that like my dad, when he was alive, uh, he told me that like, (sighs) He, t- he did tell me that he had experiences where he astral projected, where he, f- or he oh. nearly had out-of-body experiences, but each time he got scared and returned to his body. Oh. So weirdly, I was like, she might be onto something. She might actually that's have the gift. Interesting. <laughs> Are your dad's a little freaking out now. He's going back in his body Literally, now. that's what she said. She was like, I think he got scared and went back. Oh, oh that is tough. Like, I, I usually... I'm not a super confrontational person, but I do feel in that moment, I'd be like, hey, I need you guys to stop talking to me, like, period. Like, because oh, you're yeah. emotional... And you might want to feel things. Yeah. And like, it it was like you, I don't need it, tasks it could, right it now. It could take you out of it. You know, oh, she yeah. could wait a, a few months, years yeah. to share that, you know. <laughs> so did you have the funeral? Uh, we did. We're going to have like a memorial service uh, this weekend because uh, we had him cremated as per his wishes. And we're going to scatter them about uh, the land uh, upstate. And that's what we're going to do. And so, like see just a couple of family friends with us. And Is your uh, mom coming with that too? Yeah, yeah. yeah so mom, she's yeah. like. It's always so hard, and it seems like when it's contentious like this, like your oh, yeah. mom might still care about this person, but it was horrible. I mean, it sounds oh, like no, it, she definitely didn't. She was like, in spite of everything, like I did love him. Like we had you. There's I I I have so much love for, and I just and she was she was like, oh yeah, I just want to be here for you, and also yeah. because like I did. Yeah, and so it, yeah, was, of course. So yeah, yeah. She, was, she sounds like she's being wonderful about it because oh, I mean, it been, sounds yeah. like with yeah. these kind of cases. You know, that's that's what happens with divorce in my mind. I yeah. mean, I, I my parents, I grew up with divorced parents and then another divorce. And the, the trial gets so ugly that the ability to, like, not badmouth the other parent or complain about the other parent with your yeah. kid becomes, oh, yeah. I'm sure, just a mammoth emotional task. Well, but made it worse. If this isn't, like, a bummer enough, there is another b- detail which made it worse is that, like, a couple months before he died, like, my dad had told, like, his lawyer that, like, that I apparently didn't care about ownership of the apartment. And he was trying to use that as leverage of why he should be able to like keep it or just sell it. Cause eventually he just wanted to sell it. And like what I actually said was that I was so tired of these divorce proceedings that I just wanted it to be done with and that I'll deal with whatever happens. And that, that I just wanted this to be done. And he, he took that to like, he twisted my words. And so I went to, oh, that's really ugly, man. And my I'm mom, really like sorry. my mom, like called me through tears saying like, you need to, see him in person and tell him that this is not what you said and I was like I absolutely do and so I went to see him and I was like if you're it was like I can accept that you're working against me but I can't I can't have a relationship with you if you're going to twist my words in your favor so no just no community and then I didn't speak to him for like two months at all and then I saw him like just a couple days before like he left uh upstate and uh and that was it that was the last time I saw him in person it was like just one last time and it was it was weird th- it's weird to think because i also have like because i started like interviewing him about his life because like his dad died before i was born and mm-hmm. like he interviewed him about his life and i have those recordings and it was my that was the first time i ever heard my grandfather's voice wow. um, Interesting. and so i wanted to do that with him as well and so i i did get to do like a couple of recordings and i did one and that like last day that i was there just like I just brought out my phone voice memos and I did a little bit of recording. Good for like, you. Because he had like all this bad stuff. He had a really amazing life. Like he worked like on a kibbutz in Israel when he was like 19. And then he was also like a traveling musician in Greece. He was an archaeologist in Turkey. He was part of like a people's resistance in Czechoslovakia wow. in the 70s. Like he did a lot of shit. Yeah. And so I really wanted to like record these stories. And like I did eventually get to like a, 
good cluster of ones that like really made an impact on me, but I, I do wish I could have done more. I mean, it's good that you, funny enough, I never met my dad's dad yeah. uh, because he died before I was born. But my dad's dad sued my dad because he like uh, this was this was a story and I, I have very mixed details because it comes from my mom and they're divorced so this could right. have been but uh, what I was told is that my grandfather gave my dad money uh, to start like help with the business okay and my dad claimed it was a gift my grandfather claimed it was a loan and sued him for the oh. money and they had a contentious my my grandfather Jesus. like left my dad's family for like a different family in Florida Whoa. very very bad but but it's so nice that your dad did that with his dad because I I've never heard my grandfather I think I've seen one picture of him I couldn't pick him up out of a lineup uh yeah, but I, I don't know anything wow. about my I, dad's dad so like same yeah these records they're so you have a recording of this? I do. I do. That's great. I have the recordings of my grandfather, and I do have some recordings. I, I do have a couple recordings of my dad. And then also, like, other, like, stories from his life, he had actually typed up for me, and he emailed to me before he died. So I have... Everything is, like, recorded in some fashion, which it's, I'm really... I'm very grateful for. These lawsuits, it's it's just really hard. I don't know what the answer is, because obviously people get entrenched in their own point of views, but they do this kind of... Uh, unforgivable damage to to relationships and it's like when you look oh, yeah. in the view of death it's like fucking forget the fucking apartment man just like have some good conversations before you go yeah and it was also that like when i told my dad i was like hey you twisted my word i actually asked him i was like if you would apologize right now let's i'm like willing to accept that you just got that you listened that you heard me wrong and that you reported it but you just heard me wrong would you apologize for that and he was like why Mm. And and then after like 20 minutes of arguing, he was he said, sorry, but very much in an I'm sorry you feel that way kind of way. And I was yeah. just like, God damn it. Brutal, brother. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, that was uh, wonderful. Now we could do a new segment. <laughs> <laughs> tough right turn. Sorry, tough hard turn. So no, no, this, no, is, this, this is, is beautiful. Wonderful. This was wonderful. And I think uh, we really went for it. Well, yeah, I think it. it's going to get a lot of likes on TikTok. I um nice. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to this has got to stop, please. No. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. You said you listened to an episode, so you know what this yes, is. I do. Uh, uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for being prepared. Uh, what has got to stop, Lucas? Okay. So other me, than other than uh, parents suing their fucking yeah. kids for apartments. This is so much. This is so much smaller. It's people playing music on speakers in the subway mm. or in any sort of locked. Mm -hmm inside public area where you're trapped mm -hmm. and that that bothers the hell out of me i just i can't now why now here's a question I, I totally agree yes why do they why are people doing this do they not have headphones is it they i want know attention? One, time, one time i said that to someone and they were like maybe they can't afford headphones and i said <laughs> i and like i was the asshole and i was like i was a little like the thing of like even, it, that may be true that may be true that they can't afford the headphones, but I'm a little like then. What Bluetooth just, speaker then is less just, expensive? You gotta listen somewhere else. Like you, it, it's one of the it's one of those things where you're like, but everyone's here together, and we just don't all get to do everything we want to do in that moment. Like I, we, I don't think we should be able to eat like slop soups and and fish and things like that. <laughs> <Chili's>. <laughs> and I'm also putting into that category listening without headphones. Right. Uh, so yeah. I didn't want to take your thing. I no, I completely that, agree. Push back I've that. always had a fantasy, one of my like like confrontation fantasies. Oh, I know you that mean. I would start playing specifically Spice Girls, which are saved on my phone. I was a big Spice Girls fan. That like I would counter it by playing Spice Girls as loud oh. as I could and be like, well, sorry, I guess we're all just listening to what we want yeah. out loud on the train. I don't know. I kind of want to do that now. I want to get a Bluetooth speaker and just wait. Listen, <laughs> I was scared to do it because of physical violence. And no offense, but you should not be doing this. You're going to get your ass. What are you saying, John Marco? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get the shit kicked out of you is what I'm saying. Have you? Ever, I, can you fight? Are you a good fighter? Can you fight? <laughs> every every couple days. I can roll York. well. I can I can dodge and roll well. I did martial arts when I when I was younger, and I remember how to roll, like protecting my head and stuff. Oh, so I can I can do that well. You're but gonna, that's a, a, that's you're gonna a, be rolling around the train. You're gonna be rolling around like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I can't fight. No. That's it's those fantasies I have. I'm always like, one day I'm gonna learn a martial art, and that's when I'm gonna start just going after people. <laughs> don't like don't, just a vigilante. I. Uh, uh, well, I completely agree. I think we can all agree that has got to stop. Yeah. Please don't wear a mask and actually just have it all as promo for your podcast. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And now we go to 
We have had, I will say, this has been a sufficiently downside episode. You said you listened to our episode with Mike yes. Kaplan, and Michael's very positive, very tough to make him mm-hmm. negative. And I feel like uh, people should listen to this one, and it balances out. Too. You know what's weird? Before I started comedy, I would see him at my supermarket. Really? Yeah, oh. we shop at the same area, and I was like, oh, that's the guy from Comedy Central Presents. He's really good. And I, I was very afraid of ever, I'm, I'm in general, I'm just very afraid of like, even if it's a positive confrontation, like just saying, oh, I've seen you. I think you're really funny. That still like really scares me a lot. So I never said If there's that. anyone who would like be friendly, it would oh, be Mike. Oh, I know. He'd be like, let's go out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you write me before? We could have had a whole friendship. Yeah. Uh, you should do his podcast. He'd love to have you. Oh, I'd love I will that set too. up an introduction. I'm happy to do that. Oh, please. I, um... I uh, okay, so so let's let's have a real blessing, Russell. Okay, you got you a blessing go, you first. Go first. So I I did a podcast. Mm, I'm gonna put it in the show notes. I, I f- forget the name, but it's it's uh, one where you do the podcast with your parent, mm. uh, and it was all over Zoom. And I had to choose my mom. <laughs> I mean, there was I could not. My dad being like, you know, talking about the son, be like, hey. Do you have a handicap part? It would have been a disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, it had to be my mom. There was no question about it. But I didn't know if my mom, I didn't know if she'd be up for it. You you'd never know as a comedian. You don't know if people are like down to talk about whatever. Yeah. And uh, my mom was, was it took a little bit to get the, you know, the, the setup of her computer on and yeah. all these things. But she was very sweet, very uh, told good stories. And a lot of it was kind of marriage uh, game show in terms of like, tell me what the other person likes to drink or like how would this person react and then you assess if the person kind of knew you well enough to get it correct. And my mom knew me very well. She One of the questions was like, they asked her was uh, if if it was the end of the world, an asteroid was coming, there was 90 minutes left, what would John Marco do? And she was like, oh, he'd probably just like run in, in the middle of the street in, in circles going, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> and I was like, wow, mom, you... You know me yeah. so oh, well. That was entirely oh. accurate. Um, and she was just a great sport. And uh, uh, I, I'm going to do a Patreon episode with her now. Oh. You know, really start exploiting all uh, my relationships. I, nice. And I'll be there. Uh, well, this might be when I go to L.A. Oh, oh but so I first, won't be there. I go to L.A. with us. I'd love to have you. <laughs> or maybe we'll wait till she's I here. I was going to get to talk to I your wa- mom. I want to have you with like my sisters and with my mom. Oh, okay. But I just don't know when logistically it'll happen. Yeah, but yeah, I'd yeah. love to have you. Yeah, there. So that's my blessing. Good work, mom. Yeah. Uh, uh, hanging in there, <laughs> um, Russell. Um, my blessing is. Um, so I had this weekend. Uh, to myself. But uh, an interesting thing happened where I felt like I bonded with my cat. Uh, like we're, I know him for seven years now, but I felt like there was like some progress in terms of like our relationship. Really? Yeah. I felt like it's timed up with our dog. Our dog just died. And so I felt like the cat was like, okay, the dog's dead. Um, or I don't know what he gets of it, but you know, the dog's dead and then Nicole was gone. So I'm like, does he think I'm just killing off family members? <laughs> so I was like, is he maybe just, he's scared of me. And he's like, I hope I don't get killed. Cause these other, he's gotten rid of half the house in like the last week. So I, I don't know if he was scared, but anyways, he was just sweeter and he was more communicative. Like I felt like I could, we, we were just, I knew what he wanted. I don't always know what he wants. He's a cat, you know? And so it's not like a dog. So like he, he's sometimes cagey about things and he can sometimes he can bite and blah, blah, blah. And I just felt like we were communicating really well over the weekend. And that we, 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 and also he seemingly out of nowhere learned how to, to fetch like a dog. So, no way. Yeah. What? So like I, I, I filmed it. I put it on Instagram. Can I ask, wait, very quick, forgive me for interrupting. Yeah. But what kind of cat is it? Is it a Maine Coon? Because I'm aware that they, kind of behave like dogs um i don't didn't know there's different cats other than like the famous i didn't know there was one called that he's like you say that a main coon he are we still saying that word i thought that word was a big no-no you're that second part of that word (laughs) you're isn't that a bad isn't that like yes it is that is a slur i think that is the name of the cat a main coon is a kind of cat yes also i'm definitely not getting one of those there's (laughs) sure Uh, I'd like the main C word, please. I uh, <laughs> am not a part of this part of the thing. I'm, so uh, he's a black and white cat we found, I found on the street. So um, he, uh, but yeah, I told him to fetch. He, what, was he, what was he fetching? A little fake mouse, you know? And but it was, it, like, it was you. like one of those things where one day I was doing it and it was basically me 
fetching to myself. Like he really loves chasing after it when I throw it, uh -huh. but he wasn't bringing it back. And so for like three hours, I was like, he just feels like he needs to play. And I was like doing stuff around the house. So like for three hours, I was just like throwing it and then he'd run after it. And then I would get it uh, after he like played with it a little bit and throw it again. So then the next day he brought it to me and I was like, Oh, interesting. Okay. And then I threw it and then he kept bringing it back every time he brought it back. And I was like, he gets the concept now. And I didn't have to go and get it myself. That's Anyways, awesome. it was, I just felt like we had a breakthrough in our relationship seven years in and uh, it was nice. That's really nice. Yeah. Just for, for new listeners, uh, what's the cat's name? <sighs> I'm not telling you. I'm, I'm not telling them because no, I'm not telling them. It's Louie. I, uh, oh. I had him for a long time. Was it after? Uh huh. Yeah. It's partially, partially, the name is fun. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Uh. And what is your blessing, Lucas? Well, I was trying to think of a really good answer for this one, and I think I came up with one, which is the word no. Mm. And the <sighs> reason why is because, uh, someone I, I forget if it was like a podcast, but someone said like. Even though Donald Trump is, like, responsible for all of the damage he's done to the country, he is a human, and we must remember and think to ourselves, what would each of us be like if we grew up never hearing the word no? Mm. And I was like, oh, I would be an asshole, too. Like, I don't know if I would do everything that he did, but I know that I wouldn't be a good person. And so I generally started thinking, oh, I'm so glad that I heard the word no as much as I did. And I think that I'm... And I'm so thankful that other people that I like evidently were too. Yeah. Well, that's Lucas uh, with a message that, you know, feel bad for Trump and we should love him <laughs> and forgive him and honestly maybe give him a second shot at the presidency well, let's because see. he finally heard no yeah. one time and we maybe now he's a better person. For a while. Who knows? What he's been kicked off social media. He understands yeah. the concept. He's going to be super empathic yeah. now. <laughs> he should get on TikTok. Um, uh, well, I that think he tried, but he wasn't able to. Really? I, th I think I know. I don't think he was allowed on TikTok. I, at least I know that. At least I think that. I don't know anything. I'm like pro it, and then I'm also like I am nervous just about social media in general. I'm just I get nervous. Wouldn't it be first funny? Trump? It'd be funny if he was only my jokes. It would be funny if he was only allowed to do the dances. Oh that, yeah, that would be great. Wouldn't it also be funny? I was just thinking if Trump came back as like the like unquestionably like what he was saying and what was being put out there was he was the most progressive. <laughs> like most progressive liberal person and he just like completely switched personalities just to to really like fuck with us even almost like more. a born again christian just yeah, like i've had an awakening i had an awakening and he really does a mea culpa and he like really apologizes and and so like i don't think there's any chance any like progressives or liberals would get behind him but it would just be such if he was a, dying a, if he was on his deathbed he was like yeah abortion's fine i've paid for no, no, a no. thousand he like, abortions he needs to go like crazily like he really needs to like apologize for what he did but it would just be funny to like fuck with everyone's minds if he did mm. that just to, as an experiment I'm not advocating for this it. This is the most pro-Trump ending I've ever had on this podcast. <laughs> I never expected that in a million years. Oh, uh, no, just because um, at some level it feels like he was been fucking with us the whole time. Do you know what I mean? Like just doing a weird social experiment. And that would, yeah. that would further that. That's a thought. That's um, <laughs> Any plugs? Anything you want to plug? Um, uh, you can follow me on social media at Lucas T. Arnold. Um, uh, on all social media, you can also follow uh, my podcast, Two Nosy Meerkats. Um, that's the uh, handle on all social media, uh, lucastarnold.com. And that's it, yeah. And you have merch. I do have merch, yeah. Yeah, and it's that phrase you do. What is it? Uh, uh, the, hey, goodbye. It's like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I also but I also have like a couple from like sketch characters, like Jenkins, like stuff about like women's clothing. I've, I've sold like some about that. Good for you, man. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, Russell, anything you want to... Uh, no, you can follow me at Russell J. Daniels at Trump.net. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no. uh, we have an Uncle Function show. Yes, July 9th. July Get 9th. Get tickets. So, yeah, so this this will come out. It's coming I, out. Uh, I will be at, um, I just I just wrote June 22nd on this paper as if I know what the come fuck. Come on, you know what's supposed happening to be there. June 22nd. I will be uh, July 4th. I will be headlining Mohegan Sun. I'm sure I will regret it. I'm like performing at a barbecue in Connecticut. I don't need to sell tickets to that. But then I'll be headlining Comics Mohegan Sun in Connecticut that night, July 4th. So uh, I thought that was happy August. Happy birthday, America. I'm at, no, I'm headlining a weekend in August, but I'm oh, just doing okay. a one nighter. Okay, gotcha. Uh, July 4th, and uh, I'm, I just have a feeling it'll be a disastrous. Everyone will be drunk from their barbecues if they even show up. If they're up. even there, yeah. But just, just come out. 
Come on. I got, come on. Come on. Go come to Mohegan on. Sun, July uh, But 4th. thank you. And I, I think uh, we, we. oh, I got I to gotta spin this. I, I really need to master this um, skill. Uh, just remember that um, since on the, vo- the note of voiceovers that we can record as many memories as we want. Uh, but when we're gone, we're fucking gone. And guess what? Even those recordings, those pictures, those photographs, every trace of your existence will one day uh, melt when the sun explodes and you truly know when your existence oh, that's kinda nice. will be gone. I like that. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> that's not supposed to be comforting well, we're at all. We're all in it together. We're all going to yeah. not be remembered. We're all not we're in all it together. We're all going to be dust yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. Like my dad's ashes. Oh, yeah. my God. Can you... Oh. Wait, can you do some of these impressions as we fade out? Yeah. Andrew Dice Clay. Um, uh, the pro- what's, what's the problem here with you guys? <laughs> Donald Duck. <laughs> uh, 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 Gandalf. Oh, uh, John Marco, fantastic. Wow. Uh, Kronk. Oh, wow. Great job on your podcast. Great audio. No, I see. One but of my <laughs> favorites. Sweating her balls off, but it's good. Uh, <laughs> Nick Offerman. John Marco, I'm so proud of you. You've come <laughs> so far in your audio journey. Amazing. Michael Caine. You know what? I had an amazing time in spite of my father's death. But you know what? It was amazing. It's about <laughs> you. And uh, seeing us out, George Takei. Oh, my. Perfect.